Hey guys, Luke here again with you and welcome back. In this video we're going to be assembling the hydrofoil that we've just built in this entire series. So in this video, like I said, we'll go through the assembly and I'll also give you some points for certain things that I was thinking about while I was making the videos just to clarify uh, a couple of things. So first, the first thing I want to do is talk about the screws and then I also want to weigh everything so I can show you the weight. So what we have here are M6 screws. So metric six stainless steel high tensile screws with a countersunk head. Uh, and you can see that the screw head itself can either be a sort of a star, they call them a Torx head here in Canada, or a hex head like an Allen key, or even a Phillips head like that. But I think recommended, definitely these, these are sort of the two best options. This, this sort of star or Torx and the, uh, the Allen key. The important thing is that they're stainless steel, so they're not corroding, and they're higher tensile, so they're just a stronger version. Or even a 316 grade stainless steel is sufficient. Um, and one thing I want to talk about is that when you're using two different metals, so we have the stainless steel screw screwing into the aluminium mast, what happens is they sort of react, particularly with the salt water, and they can bind together, they can lock themselves together. So it's, a, it's advised to do two things. One is to sort of have, to lubricate those threads and to not just leave your foil assembled for weeks on end. So after, after a session, you can pull your wing off or at least crack it. So what I, what I mean by like at least loosen the screw and then do it back up so they're not sort of binding and just staying in that one spot because they will actually fuse together. So for this assembly, what we've got, or what I recommend, is using five 25 millimeter screws. So this will do the front wing. Three 50 millimeter screws that will do the connection to the mast. And then two 20 millimeter screws that will do the rear wing. So when we put the screw through the wing, you can see how much purchase we have. So that's about 10 millimeters. That's a good amount of thread that will really hold into, into the wing. We wouldn't want it something like that. That will, definitely wouldn't be enough strength. And it doesn't necessarily need to go all the way through the mast and come out, uh, the fuselage, and come out here either. So just about 10 millimeters is, is a good amount. So if you make a different thickness wing, you'll need to measure your thicknesses and make sure that you've got the right size. For this wing, following these plans, the 25 millimeter is a really nice size for the uh, for the front wing. You can see that's sort of a little less than what we'd normally like, but remember that the fuselage is very thin at that front point. So it actually works perfectly that as the curve of the wing is going down, that thread is going getting longer, but it also works with the slope of the fuselage. So we also have these three other screws. These are 30 millimeter screws, and these actually connect the base plate to the mast. These actually come with the kit to connect the base plate to the mast, but of course we need them as well to make that connection. So before we assemble it, I just want to weigh, weigh the items so you can see what each component weighs. I'm really excited about this actually because we did slim a lot of this alloy out, and when we put this back on the scale, you can see it comes in at around about 860 grams. So we've actually removed quite a lot of weight out of this and that that's really, uh, it's great news because when I, if I just grab the, uh, the existing three quarter inch uh, fuselage, you can see that's at about 710, say. So this is only 150 grams heavier than this one. And it's because we've got the extra width, I could take more out of the, out of sort of this, the section when I was shaping it. But this is going to be significantly stronger than this one. And it's only 150 grams heavier. So I'm really happy with that result. If we, if we weigh the wings, the rear wing is 95 grams. So very, very light, nice and strong, very light. And the front wing, take the screw out, comes in at about 470 grams. 
So all in all, it's quite a light setup. It doesn't feel heavy. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's nice because one of the hesitations people have with the aluminium is everything starts to get a bit heavy, but it really doesn't feel heavy. It's not a heavy foil uh, the way that we've constructed it. So now let's put it together. So this is the big moment of truth, of course. We've, we've measured all of our holes and now we're really hoping that it all lines up. Um, I did want to say that while we're assembling it, if it doesn't line up, you can sort of, let me just move this. So these holes here, if these don't line up perfectly, then you can put the drill in and, and wiggle the drill slightly and then loosen up that hole and, and make sure everything goes together. But hopefully this is gonna go straight together. One of the, one of the key keys to success here is actually as we've done measuring and, and drilling from the two sides that actually touch. So making sure that all of the, all of the measurements are on the faces that are going to really screw together. Okay, so far that looks pretty good. So I like to just get a couple of them in, in slightly just to make sure they're all going to go before you tighten anything up, just in case it has to slide around. Any adjustments need to be made. That is all working. So the first time putting the screws in, they can feel a little tight, mainly because we've just tapped them. So if you haven't got all the thread or dust or anything out of it yet, but that's that's why I sort of uh, you blow the WD-40 through it and just try and clean those threads out. But all in all, this is this is working pretty well. So when we're when you take this out for the first time, what you want to do is probably only fly it for about half an hour and then come in and tighten these screws up again. For the first couple of sessions, you want to periodically tighten up the screws to make sure that if they're compressing at all, when they get all that load from the first fly, if they compress or move at all, you come back and you tighten them up so that the whole assembly doesn't get loose. You definitely don't want to fly the foil if the screws aren't tight. So you want to be able to tighten them up nice and tight. And these are really good screws for that. These Torx heads. There we go, look at that. That looks absolutely perfect in my opinion. As we were talking about in the last video, we've just got a bit of purchase there. You can see the screw's slightly proud. It's not gonna make any, any, you're not gonna notice that difference with the hydrodynamics, but that's gonna keep a very strong connection there. Really, really solid. So that's great. Okay, let's try the rear wing. And you can see since the last video, now that these are dry, they don't look quite as shiny. But like I was saying, as soon as you take them out and, and, and fly this, it actually seems to self-polish. There we go. Okay, so you can sort of see the differences now with the different screw heads, how they work. This one's definitely going to, this Phillips head's definitely going to wear out the first, so I really don't like that option. These ones work fine, but this tool makes things sort of faster and easier, so it's completely up to you. We're also going to have, we'll have some screw packages on the website, so you can check out the website for all the accessories. Um, we'll have all the stuff that we recommend there. And the next step is to connect it to the mast. So one thing that... I actually forgot to mention when we were chatting about the mask before in the design and why I decided to use the aluminium mast is that the other big benefit is that the aluminium masts are the most cost effective part of an entire foil system. So it sort of makes sense to use them because they're, they're sort of in, inexpensive and then you've got a really solid setup you're not going to have any catastrophic failures on those connection points that um, that can occur. So of course, just wind those in, get them started. This is 
coming together very nicely. The other thing about um, using the Marston base plate is that you can connect it to any board because when you use one of these base plates they're set out to basically go to, to the standard track width so you can connect it to different tracks and different mast lengths as well so while you're learning you can get a shorter mast it's going to make it a lot easier for learning and then you can start to increase the length of the mast and change in discipline as well so when you surf foiling you might have a sort of a medium sized mast when you kite foiling you might put a longer mast on things like that you might start to learn how to wing or vice versa and then you want to have different masts and different setups so you can just quickly interchange the mast across but you get to ride of course the foil that you've built so lots of fun okay so that looks really nice you can see that has you know perfectly flush there with those screw heads and that is all connected so what a big moment i mean Quite a lot of work, you know, but that is it. That is done. Ready to basically connect to the to my board and fly. Again, I really like the thickness of the, the fuselage there. This all feels really good. So one thing that I also forgot to mention in the very first video when we we're talking about the design is the aspect ratio. So the, the, the ratio between the cord and the wingspan. So different aspect ratios will have different sort of characteristics. You can again Google that and decide what sort of aspect ratio you want, like a high aspect or, or low aspect. This is a medium aspect. So this is sort of a good all rounder aspect ratio. But again, that's something that you might want to consider. And I, I did just want to touch on that because I forgot to mention that before. As well as that, I wanted to talk about the core because I, I think a lot of people have the question, can I just use plywood for the core? The reason that we don't use the plywood for the core, although it is possible, is that the, the sort of cross hatching of the plywood, so the different grain directions, they're perpendicular to each other in each layer, sort of takes away what, from what I like in this solid wood core and that's creating strength from, from wingtip to wingtip. And so once you have the plywood, like if we got the piece of plywood over that same length, you could bend it, it would be far more flexible than the solid core. So I really recommend going to the solid core. Um, plywood's nice because you buy it, it's already pre-thicknessed -thick and all of that, of course. So you really could use it if you want to, but I'd probably put a little bit of extra fiberglass on top of it to try and stiffen that up if you were gonna use plywood. Of course, you can also use foam. The reason that I'm using the wood instead of foam is again, you're getting the strength out of the wood itself. Um, the foam doesn't really offer any strength. But the foam's obviously a lot easier to shape, okay? Like it, you can just buzz it down really, really quickly. But it's also harder to get these really perfect shapes um, and like really thin in the trailing edge and, and things like that. So I prefer, again, I really like the idea of using the wood. Of course, you can make the same thing out of foam. You can make the same thing out of plywood. You could wrap the whole thing in carbon. You know, you, there's, there's so many options and you can basically do whatever you want. And the purpose of these videos was, I just wanted to share how I do it. And then you can go out there and modify it and do it however you want. If you've got other ideas of how you, things you want to try, great, go ahead and try them. There's absolutely no reason why you can't try them. And this sort of modular setup using the production masks and the aluminium fuselage, means that you really can go and try multiple and once you've built the first one, go and try different wings, try different layups of, of, of um, fiberglass and carbon, try different cores, try different aspect ratios, try different thicknesses, you know, all of those things and that's actually part of the fun. I mean, that's, what, that's why we're here. So um, yeah, I did, but I did want to mention that. The core, you know, it's up to you, but I think the, the solid timber is the way to go and um, then shape it down exactly like we've gone through in the video. That's definitely what I find has been the best. As well as that, I think a lot of people will be wondering about the completely flat profile of the wings. Uh, definitely, you know, having a curve or a different shape 
it it might suit your style better but I think for the majority of people you're really not going to notice it too much so this definitely will work for you um, if you want to put some curves in it later I might even make some more videos about how to make curved wings but you know I, I wouldn't stress out about this too much I think if you read a lot about foils on the internet it's easy to get caught up in it and think oh if I don't have this particular little winglet coming up off here then you know the foils not gonna fly it's definitely going to work they're very subtle differences those things and and if you're if you're if you're skilled if you're advanced foiler you're gonna know, you'll be listening to that thinking oh no I really like how this other thing performs hundred percent you would feel those those small differences but for the majority of people it just an average fall is going to work so to, to give an example when I am strapless riding my strapless kiteboard like surfboard the difference between a three kilo board and a 2.5 kilo board is a completely different experience for me right and for most people they'll be like that makes no difference to my session but for me that half a kilo in that the weight of that board completely changes my session it changes the types of tricks I can do it changes how many tricks I land my completion rate all of these different things and so when you are starting to get more advanced in your foiling then you're gonna have that same experience where you're gonna think oh that very small difference makes a huge difference to my session but for most people in that beginner intermediate whether this wing is flat or curved, you're not really going to notice and this is so much easier to make. So don't get caught up, I think, in all of those really, you know, fancy designs. This one, this medium aspect, it's flat, easy to, easy to manufacture, definitely flies and it can be a lot of fun as well. And the last thing I want to touch on was that this is a multi-day process. So it's been sort of five or six days since I started this and it's not that uh, there's a, it's a full day's work. You're just doing small amounts every day, but it is that sort of multi-day process. And and when I was making the videos, you know, actually making the video and trying to explain these things as I'm going through it, made me realize there are a lot of different processes. You know, we're doing woodworking, we're doing fiberglassing, we're doing metal work, we're putting it all together. And so depending on what skills you've already got, that might be easy for you, or maybe it's a bit of a learning curve, but it does take that time to go through it. So it's a bit of a project, but you know, very fun, I think, in the end and, and, and rewarding. So, look, I think uh, the next big step, of course, is to take it for a test. So, luckily, we're actually flying to Australia tomorrow, so I'm going to pack it in the bags, we're going to get it to Oz, and I'm going to get it on the water, and we'll take it for a run and, and see how it performs. I know it's already going to work, okay, but, you know, I've already ridden one very similar to the other, the other version. It's all going to work, but it'll be fun to get it out there and, and uh, see it work again, so... Thanks again for watching all the way through this video series. I mean, it's been a long series and I really hope that you followed along and you built a foil for yourself. So congratulations if you have and now you've got your own homemade foil. That would be absolutely awesome. Reach out if you've got any other questions, of course. Put them in the comments box. Check out our website for if you're just catching up to this video now. The plans are there. The parts and accessories are there. More tips are there. So it's, it's all there that you can go and uh, you can check out what we've got to help you build your own foil from home as well. So again, a big thank you from me and I hope to see you in the next video and we'll see you soon.